Next up, Mr. Manos Manoli, Chief Information Security Officer of Marlo Navigation and the Chairman of the Cyber Security Chamber Digitalization Committee. Very good day. Can you hear me and see me? Yes. Excellent. Yep. Let me just try to also find my presentation. Can you also somehow see my presentation at all? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, now you good to go. Now, yes. Is it on now? Yep. Yes, yes. Okay. Very good day, everyone. It's been quite a nice uh, seminar until now. I will uh, somehow try to talk a little bit about cybersecurity and uh, give you a small idea or a picture of what is going on in the whole world. I wouldn't say that I will do an, uh, a surprising presentation because I think the word surprising in 2020 has changed dramatically in the dictionary. <laughs> so I will try to give uh, more or less a picture of uh, what is going on around the world regarding cybersecurity and uh, especially in, in the shipping industry. Um, COVID-19 pandemic um, over the last months has forced organizations and companies and individuals to actually move into a new era, to embrace new practices, um, which of course are working out from home, outside from our secure business networks. This came really rapidly and very fast. And actually, it was like someone has pushed the fast forward button over the digitalization steps of the IT world. The bad, the bad things and the downside of this is that users are working from home. Cyber criminals love the idea of users working from homes. Cyber criminals also, they work from home. So while the world is amazed, speechless, um, muted or focused on the health and econ economic threats of COVID-19, the cyber criminals around the world are capitalizing on this crisis, taking advantage of all this noise and upgrading reverse human engineering into a new level. If you don't know yet what uh, human reverse engineering it is, I will explain you very quickly in my next slides, or I'll try to explain. Um, if you're not sure what uh, the noise is, the noise was something that the cyber criminals were actually using in order to distract the IT people or distract the employees in order to deploy their attacks or deploy their human engineering attacks. If you actually think of how things were done in the past, um, has changed dramatically how the things are made now in the new era that we are living. Cyber intelligence centers observe spikes of phishing attacks. Spams, ransomware attacks are using COVID-19 as a bait to impersonate and therefore mislead employees and customers. Do you all know by now what a ransomware attack is? That's when they actually deploy a file to you. They send you a file. You open the file. The file is usually unstoppable by an antivirus. And uh, then once you uh, run that PDF, or once you open that PDF, the PDF start in, starts running a software behind 
which is hidden very well in that file, encrypts your whole server or your whole environment, and then uh, someone is contacting you asking for ransoms. Okay, that's what a ransomware is. So not only business are being targeted, but also end users. End users who also out of desperation or out of um, knowledge hunger, they down COVID-19 related applications. They are also being tricked into download ransomware, which are disguised as legitimate applications. Cyber threats have exploded in the year 2020 and taking advantage of the needs and fears of global populations. It is social engineering at its worst and unfortunately is more likely to grow and also flourish in these uncertain times. And what is causing that? Why it's this booming right now? It's out of our try, out of our desperate, quick move to shift everything into a remote session, a lot of organizations have simplified or eliminated different security procedures that were in place very well before. They were in place inside those castles that we have built with firewalls, intrusion preventions, and uh, uh, malware detections. Now we have our colleagues sitting in home networks, sharing our files, sending our files, sometimes encrypted, sometimes unencrypted. I remember that I wanted to actually cancel a, a, a credit card uh, back on November. The lady in the bank actually asked me to go and visit the branch. I have not visited a bank, bank branch for the last three years. I had to fill a form, submit it, take my ID, and then they will examine if they wanted to cancel the credit card, which I didn't use. On March, I canceled that credit card over the phone within 30 seconds. So we are out of this um, try to make things, everything to work from home, to work remotely, where somehow there is a tendency to, um, if not eliminate, to give a lot of slack on our security procedures. Um, big changes now are happening with small email messages. Um, and usually when it's a matter of safety or sickness, which is actually the cases which the cyber criminals are taking advantage of, it's much easier to believe information that appears in your inbox. Let me just give you an example. If I will send you a spoof message this morning, 8 o'clock, to, saying to you that this event was postponed, were you going to be here? Or will you try to be here? Or will you say it's postponed and just uh, give up? Mail scams are increased by 400% over the mon month of March, uh, making COVID-19 the largest ever security threat. And that's not me saying it. You just Google it or go into the security consultants, go into the security pages and look into them. I have a few friends that uh, they work into big organizations and said, well, we haven't seen anything yet. We haven't been hacked or we haven't been um, <clears throat> disturbed. So how can you say that uh, COVID-19 is the largest ever security threat? It's because definitely the level has changed. I will explain in my next slides. Do you remember this? This is GDPR. I cannot um, think of a seminar or of a uh, course or even a conversation back in, in, back in 2019 
where the GDPR was not mentioned. Um, personal protection of data was the topic of the hour. I mean, everyone was talking about this regulation, data protection, how to protect our seafarers' data, how to protect our personal data, license documents. When was the last time you heard about someone talking about GDPR? Did we just put everything on a side, focusing on the survival of our um, operations? And did we somehow stop thinking about security procedures and protection of data? Did all this went into low priority? Um, did we somehow forgot about sending encrypted emails and we just leave it to the users or leave it to the colleagues to act urgently and uh, now data protection has a less significant role. 52 of legal and compliance leaders are concerned about third-part cyber risk due to remote work since COVID-19. And that's not me saying that that's Gardner. For those who don't know who Gardner is, it's a very reputable, well-known organization that is actually evaluating the whole IT world and is also ranking digitalization companies, security companies. It's actually a benchmark that has the mechanism to evaluate how well you are performing in your industry. So Gardner now is reporting that so many organizations are actually being uh, used as Trojan horses in order to be um, attacked or spoof other companies. If you're not really familiar with the word spoof or mail phishing, let me just uh, tell you that this is the action where you impersonating someone in order to gain information, in order to understand and um, observe all the procedures uh, with the intention to attack at a certain point. I'm keep dragging this slide in all my security presentations when I talk about security. And here, I'm not quite sure if you can see my, uh, my cursor, my mouse cursor hovering over the word. So on the, in case you don't see my cursor, on the left-hand side is the old school hackers, you know. That's the hackers of the old time where they had the, um, they had the intention to disrupt your business, to shut you down, to put pornographic material on your web pages, to humiliate your company and your organization, and they use IT tools and scripts, okay? And why did they do that? They were doing it for fame, okay? Cyber criminals today, they definitely don't want to disrupt your organization. They don't want to make you understand that they are, they are observing. Therefore, they will stay as long as it takes in a stealth mode receiving information about your people, your procedure, your invoices, your suppliers, until they have a case that they can take advantage. They use human reverse engineering tools. Um, they will avoid to attack big organizations directly. Why? Because they know that the big organizations have done their homework. If you try to attack Marlowe, first of all, you will be probably attacking one of my honeypots without you knowing. You know what a honeypot is? It's like a little pot with honey inside. It's an IP address or an IP range 
claiming to be Marlow with a few files inside that make you think that you have get into somewhere. These files are strategically placed with different access levels. So the more creative you get, the more you think you're getting into the organization where we collect your data. You, we collect your floating IP addresses. We collect your range. We collect all kinds of metadata to identify why you're trying to mess with us. So hackers or cyber criminals will avoid to directly hit big organizations that they're doing their homework. They will use something that you trust. They will target an easier target. They will go for your smaller coworkers, suppliers, agents, your staff that are working from home behind a home network that actually has no defense. Someone will tell me, well, no, my remote operating users, you know, they're using a VPN, a virtual private network to connect with me, it's all secure. It's not. The connection is secure, but their environment, their home base ADSL network, their computer, which is an IT, IT prostitute, excuse me for my French, is not a secure environment. They, yes, using a secure connection to connect with you, but with an unsecure device. That's that's compares to me having one million euros in my pocket. And I will jump into a, an armed bulletproof bus that will go around the world, but I don't know who's in the bus with me. So you will tell me that, well, they I have created also a certificate for them. I have also created a two-way authentication for them. L let's let's look at that on my next slides. So there is a terminology, okay? First of all, let me say what are those question marks? What is the motive for these cyber criminals? It's only one motive. I keep saying this to all my presentation. That's money, okay? They don't care about what the, rep the reputation of the company is, how big the company is, it's all about money. So the companies now have something that is called risk appetite. And my question is that, did we all do our homework and establish not only a secure connection, but a secure environment to our people who work from home? Or did this risk appetite become uh, something else? Or did it grow enormously? Did we actually make sure that those devices home are secure devices? Did we also make sure that their place that they're sitting is actually has all what it takes to access or even to become part of our network? All the companies that are not educating their security, their employees about security have a huge risk appetite. Any company today that doesn't have a security strategy has a huge risk appetite. Security is not an IT thing anymore. It's a, it's a lifestyle to everyone. Someone said, I'm sharing my computer from work and I have a password, a complex password. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so... I have an eight character password, a, which contains also <clears throat> um, special characters. Thank you for telling me all this. You shouldn't be telling me all this. You know, this is a picture from Hive Systems describing how far a brute force attack can identify your username and password. So if you have just told me that you have an eight character password in your company, let's say that you have only numbers, brute force can find it instantly. Brute force attack can have five seconds to find it if it contains lowercase and high case uh, letters. It will take me an hour for the brute force attack. 
if you have also uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. And it will take eight hours if you have numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and symbols. I can teach a 10-year-old kid how to deploy a brute force utility to any um, remote terminal session. I can teach him how to do that. Brute force tools can be downloaded by the internet and there's network security tools. They're not meant for hijacking computers. They are meant for evaluating your security. And this brute force attack pattern does not refer to human reverse engineering. So let's take something like you have a 10 characters, password, lowercase, uppercase, and you also have special characters into it. And with this password, I can get into your business network. It says here five years. Okay. That five years password, it takes me only if I don't know anything else about the rest and you suddenly have a 10 characters password. Let me just apply a little bit of security engineering. If I somehow call your IT manager and say that I'm one of the auditing external organizations and we're not going to do the audit this year, and so uh, <clears throat> please, I'm missing two things to finalize. I'm only calling from home because, you know, I'm working from home as everyone in the organization. I'm actually missing a procedure that describes your, um, describes your uh, let's say, uh, leave employee deletion and i'm also missing the procedure that describes your password in your policy can you send me this because i'm working from home and i cannot find it i cannot go to the office that's security uh breach that's a uh, reverse engineering and my answer is will your it manager be delighted that is not going to be an audit this year and by sending you these procedures uh he will get off the audit and if i have the procedure that says yes it is 10 characters, five letters, five uh, um, uh, numbers, and symbols, then it makes this brute force attack much quicker because I'm not searching for anything else. And if we apply a little bit of human common sense, if there is uppercase and lowercase, 99% of the people have only one character uppercase. Guess who? which one? The first one. And then if there is special characters, there's only one of them, 99.8% of the people. And it's the last one. And guess which one is it? The exclamation mark. Okay. We humans, we are programmed to think in a specific way. Believe me, this year, five years finding a password is the worst scenario. There's ways of making it too much too uh, easier. Out of coronavirus related cyber threats that also include um, shipping, 33,000 unemployed applicants were exposed to data security breach for the pandemic unemployment assistance program in May. Scams increased by 700% on August, making COVID 19 the largest ever security uh, threat. There is the reference next to it, so don't take my words, just follow the link here and you can. Search it yourself. Um, half a million Zoom user accounts were compromised and sent on the dark web forum. That's, I think, on February. 471 fake online. I'm just jumping on a few ones because I would definitely run out of time. Um, visit to popular hacker websites increased by 66%. In Cyprus, listen to that. We have the first nine cases of SIM hijacking cases. Do you know what a SIM hijack is? You know what a SIM card is inside your telephone? A lot of people, they will brag and say, I have a certificate, I have a username and password, that's a two-way authentication, and I have a third password that confirms transactions as a three-way authentication. There is a security password that expires. 
will ask why those nine cases. Ask your telephony provider how come we have nine cases where specific people were targeted in Cyprus. Their telephones were stolen at the right moment. And there was a person at the provider that had the guts to appear with a fake ID card and requested for a new telephone SIM card renewal. You know what he did? He had, he, he had to do just flash the, the fake ID card over the window and he was handed to his hand a new SIM card. He ran into the car, enabled the SIM card, enabled on that same SIM card the um, hotspot, go into the hacked site, make the transaction, and now the third way authentication SIM expired uh, password came on that phone. He made the transaction and he destroyed the phone. Five minutes, thousands and thousands of euros were lost. This is COVID um, related uh, crime. We are actually smashing over our security or giving slack to our security. This is cybercrime incidents. I'm not dragging it too long, so I will try to speed up since I don't have, I think I have, an, that's my last slide. A lot of people have talked about um, artificial intelligence. That's what we're deploying at Marlowe as well. In multi-levels, we have artificial intelligence in our uh, content checking mail, where we block all our spoof messages, which do not match the pattern of the sender. We have artificial intelligence that actually check every single connection to our internet from our outside user. And there is a lot of things coming into AI. I'm personally a contributor to the AI um, society. And there's great things coming as a response or as a reply to this fast forward speed that we are living today. Digitalization, working from any place is not going to leave soon. It's going to be probably the next standard. So the security world is actually waking up very suddenly in order to provide this artificial intelligence. There will be no passwords tomorrow. The password will be the distance that you're holding the telephone from your head. How does he know that? From the inclinometer inside your phone. He knows every time how what's the distance you have in your from your face. He knows you from your uh, speed that you're pressing the buttons. It simulates and understands the lag of your connection. Um, if you're doing it from the keyboard, I tested that too many times. I can put my password as minus one, two, three. I can type it fast or slow or very slow or one hand and I can get in and I can ask anyone to try it. Tell him that it's minus one, two, three. He wouldn't succeed to log in. That's not password. We're moving away from firewalls. We're moving away from um, intrusion preventions, and we are moving away from passwords. I hope that this comes soon and soon and uh, saves us all. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, uh, Manu, we have a new guidelines coming up uh, not too long from now. I was wondering... Natalie, you know, Natalie, you, you need... Uh, there is a, a Doppler effect, there is a, a loop. Uh, so uh, try, try again. 
Oh, 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 Manos, maybe you should disconnect your microphone a minute. Maybe mute you. No, it's not coming from me. Maybe Natalie has some kind of speakers around here. Oh, maybe you can lower the volume of your speakers. It does something like this. Hello, any better now? Hello? Much better, yes, Hello? much better, much better. Yeah, okay. much better. Oh, it's coming back. It was better in the beginning, but oh, it's it's okay now. Yes, it's okay. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Okay, so um, I was just saying that we have the new guidelines coming up, not too long mm -hmm. from now. How are you preparing for those and how are you addressing those? Um, admittedly, it's nothing too specific, but... Um, how, how are you going about it? And uh, what's your prediction maybe? What's your opinion on how the regulations will progress regarding cybersecurity? Can a regulation, well, with the current speed that regulations are being uh, discussed and implemented ever catch up to the speed at which cyber crime is evolving? Yes, well, the regulations and the guidelines are actually the entrance to actually show the, the correct uh, um, way to the people and to make them aware. The guidelines are really made to as an introduction and as a good practices, or actually uh, it's only the beginning or just the tip of the iceberg. Of course, the topic is so huge and so big, it evolves so fast and so quickly that the guidelines actually allow you to enter into what are the good practices, how far you extend that and how far you apply all this is really into the organization. But the guidelines are, are actually a very good way to start with and start conceiving uh, the right path on approaching or actually on create resilience out of this uh, nasty world that we are living. Thank you, Mano. Uh, I have another question, if you could indulge me. Um, what's, we, we, we are more or less familiar and we've discussed a lot about um, cyber threats uh, on land. What are the most common cyber sources of cyber risk on board a vessel and how can we mitigate them? Very good. Um, <clears throat> That's, that's the biggest problem of the industry because everything that is considered as an asset, let's say a ship, an employee, information, um, there are actually things that the cyber criminals can actually play the game with it of the cat and mouse. Um, it's not necessarily a... Um, shipping to shipping crime. Shipping are, ships are actually, until now, left a little bit on the uh, slow speed concerning security. Uh, obviously, we cannot have the infrastructure that we have on shore uh, to have it on the vessel. So ships have been targeted have been used as a as a easier target and the lack of an IT expert on board ships actually makes it even a more attractive target to to the cyber criminals so um these people um are actually using all the resources and all their tools to uh define whatever is vulnerable and concentrate on that. So the vessels can be really a target if we don't somehow try to safeguard them from, from all sides. Thank you, Manon. 
Um, I don't you. see any further questions. So um, thank you again.